Over the years, investors have come to expect a strong start to the year thanks to the so-called January effect. That's the belief the new year brings with it higher stock prices. In this morning's U.S. Bank Economic 360, U.S. Bank Vice President and Senior Portfolio Manager Mike Deniman joins Business Watch producer Kelly Leon to talk about the January effect and if we should expect 2017 to start with a bang. Mike and Kelly. Thanks, Peg. Happy New Year, Mike. Happy New Year. Good morning. So give us some background on the January effect. Um, refresh my memory. Sure. So it's just one more of these seasonal influences that we talk mm -hmm. about from time to time in the uh -huh. market. The idea that some months are good for stocks, other months aren't so good. And the January effect is pretty simple. Like Peg said, the expectation that the market typically starts the year strongly. Uh, stocks tend to rise. And then it, it even includes the added benefit that often how January goes, the market for the whole year goes. So bad January, bad year, good January, good year. So if you're an investor, that sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Not only expect the market to do well in January, but then expect it to follow suit for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, maybe it sounds too good to, yeah. to be true. So historically, if we look over the long term, it's tended to work out pretty well. If we go back 70, 80 years, there is some basis to the theory. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, more recently, though, it hasn't worked out quite as well as it sounds. So why do you think that is? Well, so there's, you know, it's hard to explain why a seasonal influence happens yeah. in the first place, let alone why it's not happening any longer. But uh, the, the most common explanation for the January effect itself is that investors will tend to sell stocks a lot in December for tax reasons. Mm -hmm. That leaves them with cash to reinvest in January. As that money pours back into the market, that pushes stocks higher. Okay. Uh, now, though, uh, the thought is, well, you know, maybe investors rely more on more tax-exempt types of accounts, uh, 401ks, IRAs, or maybe they're using more tax-efficient investments like uh, indexed mutual funds. So not as much need to sell in December means not as much cash to reinvest in January. So uh, maybe it breaks down there. So again, hard to prove one way or the other. Those at least sound logical, so we'll, we'll go with that. So why do you think it stopped working? If, you know, in the historical context, it was, sounds like it was pretty reliable. It, it was, it was. In fact, uh, like I said, 70, 80 years over yeah. a long-term time frame, it seems to work more often than not. Over the last 10 years or so, though, really not so much. Um, in fact, in the last decade, stocks have risen in January only about half the time. So in terms of being a predictor, that's no better really than flipping a coin. Um, and then, you know, even worse, there seems to be a breakdown, too, between that connection of January to the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Prime example was last year. Yeah. Uh, 2016 started off with an awful January. Uh, so not only did we not have the market rise to start the year, the year didn't go badly after that bad start. In fact, as we know now, it was a pretty good year for the market. So as far as 2016 was concerned, both rules got broken. Mm -hmm. So whether this is just a brief hiatus in the long-term trend or if the trend itself is sort of disappearing, I impossible to say. Uh, but whatever, we can still hope for a strong start to the market. Hoping is about all we can do at this point. We'll flip a coin, cross fingers, Yeah. whatever works. Don't rely on the January That's effect. Right. All right. Thanks, Mike.